The Health Minister, Gillian Keegan, is here. Good morning. Good morning. It's a lot for people um, to take in. Are we already too late, though, to stop this virus, this uh, variant, I should say? Well, I mean, clearly we've got some cases in the country, but we have acted as quickly as we co possibly could. I mean, we found out... Actually, I think we were the first country to find out and we, we acted straight away. Uh, but this is the nature of this. You know, we're working internationally, but, you know, normally when you find a variant, you know, the reality is it exists already. Um, obviously, now what we've got, we've got five cases here. They're doing, you know, contact tracing on the ground uh, to make sure that, you know, we isolate people who've been in contact with those cases. But, of course, we've been here before. You know, this is a, a variant that's here and all the measures we're putting in place are because we don't underestimate new variants. You said five cases. I mean, what, do we know how many cases we've got? We've got five here and six morning. in Scotland as of this morning. But, you know, I, I'm sure that will rise. I mean, where are the five? Cases? The five cases, I think they started... Some in London? Yeah, there's a couple in London, Camden and Wandsworth in London. Mm. Um, then there's one in Chelmsford, Brentwood uh, area. Um, and, uh, yeah, I can't remember... Another it, couple as yeah. well. Um, OK, I think in Nottingham as well. Nottingham, yes. Yeah. Actually, yeah. they were the first two, Nottingham and, and uh, yeah. the Brentwood area. Uh, Joe Biden said there's no cause for panic. Are we in danger of overreacting? Well, we're trying to get that balance and proportion. Um, and it is difficult because it's, it's unknown, so we need to buy some time so our scientists can work with the world's leading scientists to just basically sort of figure out what... The, we know it's very transmissible by looking at the... the uh, but we don't know, you know, whether it will work with the vaccine, the vaccine will work, all the other treatments, etc. So the scientists do need some time for that. Um, we think we've got the balanced and proportional response to it, but we will review it in three weeks. That'll give the scientists enough time to hopefully give us some in insights then. We're going to be chatting to Willie Walsh, actually, in a short time, and he is not at all happy. Yes, and that's why we're trying to get the balance right with the, with the, uh, with the variant. Obviously, we've put some more countries on the red list, but, you know, we're not doing some things which would potentially, you know, shut travel down altogether. We're very much trying to keep... Uh, things going, keep you know, keep people travelling, etc. But of course, we have put a few more restrictions in place. And do you know how long that red list will stay in place? Well, they are reviewed every three weeks, so the red list is always re reviewed every three weeks. Um, okay. So we'll continue to because, review of course, that. there are a lot, quite a lot of cases in Europe. You're not thinking of adding them to the red list as well. Again, that will be continually looked at. It, it will be looked at all the time, and obviously, if you get some flare up in cases, then you know, th then we can take immediate action if we need. Okay. To. So, what about in the meantime? What about the booster? What's going to happen to... Uh, when, uh, when is everybody going to be able to have a booster if they want one? Well, they're working on the plan right now. Um, so, obviously, we took the JCVI advice. Uh, the NHS are working on oper operationalising that. So, in the next couple of days, that will come out, the booking systems, etc. You'll, be you'll be contacted by your GP. That's usually the first step. Um, but we'll Within be releasing that. Within the next couple that. of days? The next couple of days, we'll have the, opera the, the plan, and I'm pretty sure it will go in age order again. So we'll do the top age groups, you know, the older people first. I mean, obviously, most of the old people, we've done 17 million booster jabs. When you say old people, I've had SLK. mine. Yeah, I've had my <laughs> booster, so steady on. Uh, but by the end of the week, everyone will know when they can have a booster? Well, the next... I think probably what will happen is the next cohort will be invited forward and then they'll be given, uh, you know, some, some time frames. So, you know, but within the next couple of months, we are pretty good at this, at, you know, we are standing up these, these operations. So we do know what to do, but we just need to give the NHS a bit of time to operationalise you know, the new... Because we, we're doubling the eligible people, more or less, mm. who are who are due a booster now, so... But how tricky is that going to be, given that uh, already we have, I think, at two and a half million boosters a week, something like that? You yeah. want to do another million boosters yeah. a week. Have you got enough staff? Well, we've used in the past, you know... NHS staff, obviously the community nursing staff, uh, 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 the pharmacies, the GPs, volunteers, retired doctors and nurses. We've used that pool of staff in the past, so I guess they're going to be looking at which of those they need to, um, you know, bring back into. So you're going to uh, mobilise an army of um, of NHS people. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of. I mean, I don't know, you know, lots of lots of. Uh, in in my case, we had lots of retired doctors and nurses. We had lots of uh, community volunteers as well who had first aid training. So we did have a lot of that in the first. Instance. And they'll get the call up again. Well, they'll look at what they need to do. Um, but you know, we do have you know the facilities, and we do have the people, and we do have the vaccine. So they'll just be putting the plan together to see what's what's going to make most sense, what's going to optimise. Do we know if this vaccine's of any use whatsoever against this variant? 
I mean, obviously, it will be of some use. What we don't know is is is, is how this will, put, you know, we need the scientists to look at that. that. That's, again, a couple of weeks. The scientists have said they need a couple of weeks to do all the testing um, of this against, you know, all the various vaccines that we have, plus the vaccines, plus the boosters. But, of course, the very, very best thing you can do is come forward, get your first jab if you haven't had it, second jab if you haven't had it, and your booster when you're due. Could be that we're completely overreacting. I'd rather overreact than underreact at this point. I think we've been here so many uh, times that, uh, you know, we've got this fantastic wall of vaccine now. We want to keep that. We want to strengthen it to, you know, we'd rather be stronger um, to be able to, you know, face any new variants. And I think we have all the things, you know, we have all the capability to do that. So that's what we'd rather do. Um, the clinically vulnerable are being asked to come forward again. Could, we then, could they find themselves in a position where they're going to have to be jabbed every three months? I, I haven't heard that, um, but I think, you know, clearly the clinically vulnerable are the people that you want to make sure have um, as much of the protection as possible. OK, how will we know if we've come into contact with an Omicron uh, variant? How will we personally know? Well, you probably only know from the PCR test. That's the other reason the PCR well, we test... We Omicron, though, do we? Um, we we would know the PCR test is where they do they send that off for the genome sequencing. That's where you find out if you know. But which not of all variants. of not all of the um, um, labs that it's sent to are able to find out about whether it's Omicron or not at this stage. The the genome sequencing is the second, so they then go to the labs and then they send them off to the labs. So I'm not 100 percent sure what that process is going to be. But they, the the reason we've introduced PCR tests for travellers is because we want to get that. For genome sequencing. Yeah, so, but my point is, you know, you could have come back, um, you could have had your uh, test, uh, it, it would be positive, you would have found out within 48 hours, then I'm guessing, I don't know, who, who, who is it, who is it test and trace, who would then say to me, you've been in contact with somebody for... Well, you have to isolate years. anyway, right? So if, you, if you've yeah, tested positive... but I wouldn't positive. have to, so how, how would I know whether, I need, whether I'd come into contact with somebody who'd had Omicron? How would you know? Yeah. If you've been in contact with somebody who's, who's, who's yeah, how, been How tested quickly positive. would I know that I had been in contact with someone with, who'd got Omicron? I could have seen hundreds more people before you, you'd found out that I'd been in touch and then before you knew well, it. Well, they're doing that right now, right? In Camden, in Wandsworth, they're going around, figuring out everybody that these cases have been in contact with and they're getting... So it's the contact test, track, you know, the test and trace system, which is getting all your contacts, finding out who you've seen, where you've been... So, you know, that's the manual the process. The test and trace scheme only picks up half of cases, doesn't it? Uh, where have you got that figure from? That's, that's uh, uh, NHS figures. In terms of...? Uh, half of the cases that are um, test and trace only picks up half of cases and that all the testing uh, that the labs do cannot all pick up Omicron. They don't all do... We don't that's send right, every piece. We don't send every PCR test for genome sequencing. I would imagine now they're going to be sending a lot of those PCR tests for genome sequencing because we've got a, a new variant. But in terms of now, the intention now is everybody that those people have been in contact with, they will be contacting each one of them. So, you know... It, yeah, but it, we're going around the houses to say that it's going to take a long time to find out whether somebody's got Omicron and then you contact somebody else and then before you know it, it's spread everywhere. Well, that's why we're asking people to isolate. You know, that's why we're asking people to isolate until they get a, a result and then if they get a positive result, then obviously they'll look into that result more uh, clearly. That will, that will obviously go for, for, for testing. That's why we're asking people to do PCR. So if it's positive, it can be genome sequenced, it can be checked. So that's the... I mean, the processes will be putting in place now, but that's the sequence of events. And we can do that. We can do that so that we can follow, you know, the, the, the test. Now, obviously, it gets to be different. I mean, we've seen this before with Delta, right? And all the people that are in contact with you, if you've, if you've got it, will then all have to self-isolate as well. So that would be six people or so in the studio right now. Um, before you know it, we've got another pandemic on our hands, haven't we? Well, obviously, what we don't know right now is how fast this is going to transmit and whether or how you know what our wall of defence, how how well it's going to hold up. That's why we need. That's why we're putting these precautious measures in place. That's why we're reintroducing masks and we're asking people to be more cautious. We're putting the PCR test in day two so that we can you know we can get that data. But yeah, right now we are being cautious. We'll know more in three weeks. And of course, the key thing is. But you acknowledge there could be some uh, level of pandemic like we saw in, I think it in really, the summer. I think it really depends what the scientists say about our wall of defence, about how well the vaccines work. You know, there's a lot of things we need to wait for them to come up with the answers to that. But I mean, clearly we know 
we've been through every every variant of this. I mean, excuse the pun. You know, we've been through every kind of. I think there are a few more coming. Yeah, well, possibly, but we've been through all of this in the past, right? We've had to have, you know, pandemics. We, you know, we've had we've had to isolate people a lot. You know, we're trying now to use all of the tools. The point that we I'm have. getting at is, we could find ourselves in that position at Christmas time, we're where people much, are having to self-isolate. We're in a much better position because of the, but you're the vaccine to, rollout. But you're asking to self-isolate, aren't you? So they yes, could find when themselves they... in a position where you can't see your family at Christmas. No, we're very, very much hoping that we can keep Christmas on track. You know, we're asking people to isolate if they test positive with a PCR test after they come back. So they have to, well, isolate until you get your result, basically. That's what we're asking people to do. But, of course, um, you know, we need a couple of weeks just to work out how virulent it's going to be, and most importantly, how well the vaccines work. But we are in a much different position than any of the other variants because we do have many, many, many yeah, more people come, vaccinated. If, you've, if I've come into contact with you and you've got it, I'm, I have to self-isolate, don't I? Yes. OK, so I, we could find ourselves in a position at Christmas where you can't see your family. Well, you, obviously, you could be self-isolating over Christmas. Mm. You could be. Um, but what we're hoping is that, you know, we keep these cases. Obviously, everybody's going to be contacted. People will start the isolation. With or without this, you could be isolating for Christmas, you know, with, with another variant. Yeah, but, you could but your be. boss, the health secretary, said that Christmas was on track and it was all going to be fabulous. Well, of course, of course Christmas is on track. And actually what it everyone... Be, though. What everybody wants for Christmas is if you haven't had your first jab, come and get it. If you haven't had your second jab, come and get it. And if you haven't had your booster, come and get it when you're asked. Yeah. That's all we want for Christmas. And if everybody. you're in contact with somebody who's got Omicron, you might be self But well, today, it's the same if you have any variant today. You know, if you are positive today, then you isolate. It's not right to say that, then, is he? Well, I mean, he, you, you, there will be some people who will have to be isolating over Christmas. There, there always was. You know, if you have a positive test, then you isolate. You know, we've got, um, you know, the, 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 some politicians isolating at the moment. Yeah, you know? but if you come into contact with people, uh, you don't have to self-isolate. Yes. Uh, but now you're saying you do with the Omicron variant. So all, all I'm saying to you is we, we can find ourselves in a position where Christmas is ruined again. Hopefully not. And it's, you know, we've got five. So let's be proportional and balanced as we're trying to be. We've got five cases today. Uh, that will go up, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, what, what we're trying to do is really clamp down on that as much as possible. Obviously, putting these departure, sure. uh, these, these other tests no, in place, are I, all absolutely. to try and limit the number of people who are in that situation. I get it, and I certainly wouldn't want to be in your position or indeed the Health Secretary's position, but all I'm saying to you is, as of this morning, given that we have to self-isolate now, if we come into contact with somebody who's got Omicron, then we won't be able to see our loved ones at Christmas? Um, well, the chance of that right now is, is pretty low, right? We've got five, five cases in the country. But that is the, that So is behave the sensibly, as we've said to everybody, you know, we're in, reintroducing masks, we're trying to, you know, trying to delay, you know, the spread of it so mm. that we can buy the time for the scientists to be able to give us some facts, really, on, on how well we're protected with what we've done already. So that's what we're trying to do. And we're basically saying, come forward, get your jab, get your boosters. The boosters will help. We think they will help. Um, and we're just trying to, to you know, to deal with the, this unknown at the moment. We very much hope that we, uh, you know, we have a Christmas this year. You know, we've, we've had a, a, an awful experience last year. Um, and, it, you know, it is, it is unfortunate timing from that perspective. But, you know, we very much hope. Keep your Christmas plans in place. But, of course, we will have to deal with it as, you know, as the scientists, um, you know, get more information to us. We'll have to deal with what they tell us. OK. Uh, we're out of time, sadly. But it's good to talk to you as always. Thank you very much Thank indeed, you. for joining us.